excited about um, bringing together all our seed grant recipients with experts in the social sciences all over the disciplinary spectrum to think together and find a common language, a common way of thinking um, and bringing our knowledge together to identify what do we know about social transformation. Social sciences in many ways are about processes of social change, all social sciences. The visions of the program is for society to have access to a global knowledge trust on processes of social transformation. We build a program for 10 years that tries to research and answer deeper questions, new questions, identify new gaps, um, and you know, simply expand what we know and link that knowledge to practice, to people who make the change in their, in their lives, in their work, in policy making. It's been a wonderful opportunity to meet people from diverse disciplinary backgrounds, diverse geographic backgrounds, and to try and understand how sustainability happens and what are the issues pertinent to social change. I think much of the research that has happened thus far has been to make the case for sustainability and social change. Uh, I think that's been important, uh, providing evidence to make the case for it. But I do think that we need to move beyond that now. I do think we need to start asking how does social change happen? What are the contexts for social change? What are the conditions for social change? And how to make those things happen? Uh, given our own historical experiences. I think that's the kind of place where research needs to shift to. We've done a lot making the case for social change, making the case for sustainability, but now we need to shift to understanding how sustainability happens, how social change happens. The biggest, the biggest barrier we face is a perceptual one that um, we know there is technology available, we have access to that technology, we know what the technological solutions we need are. What our barriers are is policy and financing and how to convince donor organisations, development partners, even our own governments and communities that there are real solutions that are available um, and how to access those solutions and move on them. Our research is different in that it is wildly and very excitingly interdisciplinary. Um, it has the potential to bring together groups of people that have never really sat together before. We need people from the health community in the countries that we're working in. We need people from the forestry sector and the energy sector in the places that we're working in. And so it really provides a venue for people to come together and address this problem, this highly complex problem in a concrete way. Our hope is that we can provide the basic building blocks of information that will lead to incremental change. Of course, change can come without being transformative. But what is the transformative element in our research is the fact that we intend, we hope to map transformation itself. I mean, transformation changes that has happened in most of these communities over the, over the years. How does change happen in the ordinary world? How does change happen by ordinary participants? How does change happen uh, by poor people in our societies? And that's a, a hard question to ask. It, it means we have to forsake our own ideological predispositions and to ask and research questions as they should be in the real world, in the context that does exist. Change is driven by many, many different drivers. For us at the moment in the Pacific, we have huge issues we're dealing, but the greatest issue we face is climate change. Um, we're in a situation where our oceans are turning acidified um, at speed, where we're already losing entire islands and we're about to lose entire countries. Change can happen by way of uh, an individual instigating change. It can happen deliberately or indeliberately. Nature can, nature can instigate change, for instance, global change itself, even though it's caused by man, but it's, as, it's nature calling us to action. Um, the issue of Ebola is changing cultures in West Africa, and even though it's a, a disastrous thing, but it also can be an opportunity to change the way we live in terms of sanitation and environment. So change in itself, um, when we talk about it, we're talking about a change that we're gonna bring in, you know, by way of ideas. But we do recognize that change can 
could have been instigated by external forces? Uh, fundamentally, I believe that every social change that we drive must respect the fact that we are just one species on planet Earth. We don't own the planet. We are just one of the living beings on the planet. And we have to be humble enough to accept this, that we can't control everything. We can't consume everything. We can't appropriate everything. We're just a part of everything. There are lots of things that I love about this program. One of the things I really like is that it takes a very innovative way of thinking about what are the conditions and effects for change? How could we think across disciplines? How can we work together in collaborative ways to make a real difference for people? And I think that idea about science, social science, engaged to meet community needs, I mean, that's what I love. And I think that's where we can make a real difference for people. I think this programme offers the opportunity to bring both social sciences and very diverse knowledges, including from the humanities, from local people, from citizens, from policy makers, from stakeholders of all kinds together to address the really fundamental challenges of our time, which are to build transformations to both more sustainable and socially just worlds at a time of really enormous challenges on both fronts. So having a multi-stakeholder or transdisciplinary steering committee for this initiative um, is actually rather exciting because it helps to promote um, this policy imperative of, of transdisciplinarity. I train as an architect and still do practice architecture, but I work more as an environmental justice advocate. My role in the steering committee is unique, I would say, because I am the natural scientist involved in the, in the committee in order to expand the interdisciplinary discussion of the program. Well, transformations to sustainability is one of the three core themes of Future Earth, along with the work on dynamic planet and um, sustainable development. Um, at the moment, Future Earth approaches these questions through the aims of doing interdisciplinary science and co-produced science with stakeholders. I think the opportunities of this programme are enormous and that if Future Earth could f more fully embrace the Transformations to Sustainability programme that ISSC are, are spearheaded within Future Earth, we would be in a much better place to draw together both social science um, and natural science expertise in meeting these challenges. This is just the beginning of, uh, of, of, for me, a really fascinating question and a fascinating conversation. Uh, this is titled, I Would Not Dance to Your Beat. I would not dance to your beat if you call plantations forest. I would not sing with you if you privatize my water. I will confront you with my fist if climate change means death to me but business to you. I will expose your evil greed if you don't leave crude oil in the soil, tar sands in the land, and coal in the hole. I will confront and denounce you if you insist on carbon trading and other do nothing false climate solutions. I will make you see red. If you keep talking on red and push forest communities away from their land, I will drag you to the climate tribunal. If you pile up ecological debt and refuse to pay your climate debt, I will make you drink your own medicine. If you endorse genetically modified crops and throw dust in the skies to mask the sun, I will not dance to your beat unless we walk the sustainable path and accept real solutions and respect Mother Earth. Unless you do, I will not and we would not dance to your beat. My pleasure.